We here at the nanotechnology conference here outside Thessaloniki at the beach party. And hi, so who are you? Uh, so, hello, uh, my name is Gus uh, Kusulas, uh, spelled K O U S O U L A S. I'm a, uh, an associate vice president for research and economic development for Louisiana State University and a professor of biology and biotechnology. Um, I'm here to give presentations on my own research. Uh, that includes my work using herpes viruses uh, for both uh, vaccine purposes as well as therapeutics and vaccines for uh, cancer, especially melanoma. So you give somebody herpes and then they have a solution against uh, uh, cancer? So uh, currently uh, the uh, immunotherapy, which is really uh, the prevalent uh, therapeutic way of treating cancer, uh, there is a product in the market, uh, it's marketed by Amgen Corporation, it's actually a herpes, a live herpes simplex virus type 1, the same virus that causes uh, cold sores in humans. And this virus is injected into melanoma uh, on the skin and it creates an anti-tumor immune response and alleviates that tumor. We have a similar product, we believe a much better product, um, a herpes uh, virus, a live attenuated. The same virus uh, can be used for vaccine against herpes infections, both oral and genital, as well as ocular, but it can also be used to treat uh, cancers, uh, melanoma, breast cancer, prostate cancer, and ovarian cancer. So uh, does that mean that the herpes is actually a good thing? Well, it's it interesting. Goes... It's interesting because at least in experiments in mice, if the mice have been previously infected with herpes, then grafted melanoma tumors, and then those melanoma tumors are injected with the virus, the therapeutic virus, you get a much better response because the pre-existing herpes uh, infection uh, makes the tumors more susceptible to killing by the incoming virus. So yes, the answer is more than 80% of all people are already positive for herpes simplex type one. So the idea would be that those people would be even better treated uh, if they had cancer with this particular uh, product, which is also a herpes virus. So uh, it's okay if you already have herpes or do you need to not have herpes and then get this solution? Both, uh, if you do not, if you do have herpes, the prediction needs to work even better. But even if you don't, uh, the virus is quite good in alleviating uh, melanoma tumors and we hope uh, other tumors also. So herpes is not just a little thing on the lip, it's uh, something deep in the body or? So herpes viruses, um, I tell my students that unlike uh, true love, herpes is forever because it resides into neurons in a latent form and then when you stress it gets reactivated. We engineer the virus that cannot get into neurons. So if you really uh, use this virus to do intramuscular vaccination, then you pro uh, create a vaccine response that you can protect your body from incoming virus. If you're naive that this never saw the virus before, can also protect in a therapeutic way. So if you already had herpes virus and you get reactivations when you stress, the immune system is activated so you can control the virus from coming out from your neurons. So does this mean that the stuff you're doing with herpes is like a an amazing solution kind of where is it like a, a, a door into the body to to right. fix many different things so the, so viruses in general and herpes in uh, specifically are really have evolved uh, to take advantage of the body and infect different tissues by we, using genetic engineering we can engineer the viruses now to uh, do good as opposed to really cause harm so we can engineer them to become vaccines we uh, use them as vectors to be able to transfer other genes and antigens and create other vaccines. And in fact, I talked today in my presentation of using herpes virus, not only as a vaccine for herpes, but also a vaccine against malaria, which is a very important uh, parasitic disease. We do that by cloning malaria antigens into the herpes virus. So when we immunize intramuscularly mice or guinea pigs, then they're protected not only against herpes, but also against malaria. This is this sounds like mind-blowingly awesome. Is does it work? Uh, is it just uh, on rats only? Or wh where? How far is it? From so people? right now, uh, all this work uh, is done preclinical, as we say. It's done in guinea pigs, in uh, mice, in rats, and as well as in monkeys. 
The next phase is really human trials, uh, phase one, phase two trials. Uh, we do have a company uh, that uh, I'm a uh, uh, part owner that is actually uh, about to submit uh, studies for phase one. And phase one studies in humans is really uh, toxicity studies. And then phase two are efficacy studies. We do believe uh, because the product is already in the market for different purposes and has shown to be efficacious, that there is a very, uh, uh, very likely that it will work in humans uh, quite well. So how do you uh, administer this med medicine? Is it, uh, I'm, I'm joking, but is it just by a case? Or no, I'm joking, that's not, that's <laughs> not. How does it, how did they get it? Uh, so, so the medicine itself, the therapeutic, is done by injection intramuscularly. Now, if you talk about herpes infections, those are really uh, uh, transmitted by uh, immediate contact through um, either saliva or genital um, uh, contact and so on. So type one is a cold sore virus, type two is a genital infection, and this is typically how it's transmitted. It's a very important disease, a social disease, because in the US alone, there are over 300,000 of uh, herpes simplex type two genital infections. That creates a stigma and it is forever, it can reactivate, cause pain, uh, but beyond that, uh, it's more the social stigma that it carries that becomes very important because uh, it could break up uh, couples and uh, married couples and so on. There's no way to f get rid of it. Impossible. Well, you know, you could uh, reduce the reactivation of the virus to very little. So basically, instead of having a virus in a reinfection and appearance, uh, you know, once a month or once in six months, it could happen to you once or twice in your lifetime. So this is actually quite uh, efficacious. To eliminate the virus, there's no current technology to actually eliminate that virus from the body at all. Uh, but how do, you, how do you do the change from uh, once a month to once or twice a, a lifetime? It's because of the vaccine. So if your immune system is boosted, so you can actually uh, create a much better control of the virus, then the virus remains latent, it doesn't come out. So the answer to this is to really boost your immune system. Uh, but with all the stuff you're talking about in the first uh, seven minutes of this video... Oh, hello. Oh, there's a dog. Okay, uh, I hope he doesn't have a virus. Yeah. Uh, this, this guy also. Uh, so, um, but in the first seven minutes of this video, you were talking about using herpes for good. Yes. So actually, instead of, um, you know, we, we, the advent of uh, molecular biology and genetic engineering, we can engineer these viruses to become now vectors for good, so for therapeutics. In fact, that's what the product is in the market right now because you could engineer the virus to become a vaccine for malaria, for uh, tuberculosis, and for cancer. So this is the, uh, the uh, not only herpes viruses, but in the US and around the world, a number of different viruses, including influenza, uh, measles, are now used, that normally cause disease. Now they're re-engineered to actually do good. You can really re-engineer viruses? Yes. So the virus is like a molecules or something and you so, can... the, so the virus um, the uh, herpes viruses uh, uh, DNA viruses we call it uh, double standard DNA uh, about 150,000 base pairs the entire genome think of it as a chain of uh, uh, deoxyribonucleic acid can be actually cloned into a bacterium and replicated and we use genetic engineering to modify that genome and then recapture uh, the virus so in my own laboratory, we could create a brand new virus that has a gene deleted or a new gene inserted within a few weeks. So you take the DNA out of the virus, you hack it, you modify it, yes. and you put it back? Yes. And it, it, it functions like a virus, but it goes and does something good? Other, thing, other, other things, exactly. So is this, this is called uh, genetically engineered viruses. And this is like, uh, people talk about this, so it's very rare. Are you the only ones who can figure it out? No, this is actually quite prevalent in the U.S. A number of different viruses, not only herpes, as I mentioned. A lot of other viruses are engineered to actually do good, to be able to uh, use for gene therapy, lentiviruses, uh, adeno-associated virus, uh, using CRISPR-Cas9 to actually modify a chromosomal gene that's maybe uh, mutated and cause disease. Other viruses are used, as like herpes, as for vaccine and other vectors. 
So how do you hack uh, a genome? Uh, how do you go in there? Is not uh, is like uh, there's only very little knowledge about this, or no? Actually, there is a tremendous adv advance in the states right now using the uh, CRISPR Cas9 system, and that uh, in the conjunction with uh, certain viruses like Adam associated virus, uh, a lot of people on research now are looking to repair bad genes. Uh, so viruses have evolved to. Uh, become very efficient vectors to transmit a, um, uh, their genome into the cells and to even incorporate into the uh, cellular chromosomes. So taking advantage of these properties, you can, all, you can deliver a payload into cells as well as use them for repairing a um, uh, altered genome, uh, mutations that may cause harm. So there's DNA in the people and there's DNA in the virus. and. Yes. Uh, the virus goes and can do stuff in the, right. in the body. Different viruses can do all different things, yes. Uh, so this is awesome, right? Uh, so who's, who are you working with? Do you have students or...? Well, you know, my laboratory has uh, approximately 20 people. Uh, a number of students are PhD uh, students pursuing their Doctor of Philosophy. Uh, I do have postdoctoral fellows and research associates. We do have a number of core laboratories that do next-gen sequencing, so we can sequence the entire genome, the transcriptome, and we just did a lot in uh, host pathogen uh, interactions. Um, we just published uh, late last year a review article on what we call first impressions, indicating from the moment that the virus touches the cell, the cell is very different, and we take advantage of these um, uh, properties to really create uh, better uh, viruses that could do good, for instance, vaccine, vectors, and so on. So do you take, uh, does this lead to personalized medicine where you take the DNA of a person and uh, also you figure out what's wrong with them and then you target them specific medicine just for them based on their DNA? It's actually quite possible. Um, for instance, uh, a specific cancer can be sequenced the mutations can be isolated, the genes that are affected can be isolated, and those genes can then be cloned into the virus, and then you can get a personalized vaccine, a vaccine that uh, hopefully will work only for you because it specifically targets those uh, bad genes, those bad proteins that have been changed through mutation. So it's a personalized virus just for you? Yes. That fixes just you? This is mind-blowing if it works, and you're yeah. sure it works. Absolutely. I think it's uh, already, uh, not only theoretically, but in practice, at least in preclinical studies, it's obvious. And this is really where uh, personalized medicine is done, where you actually find the exact condition. And uh, the virus is only a vector system to be able to really help um, either create a vaccine response or transduce a gene uh, and repair a specific gene. So think of a virus as a uh, satellite of sorts that's so actually uh, filled with cargo and can deliver it uh, for diff different purposes. Uh, and you hear the uh, nanotechnology conference here in Thessaloniki. Uh, there's a lot to do with nanotechnology. Is this all nanotechnology, what you're talking about? Or? Well, exactly it is. So the uh, viruses are really non in micro machines, but within the micro machines, there have nano machines. They have specific mechanisms of attaching to cells, um, um, fusing with cellular membranes. So in, in, ex in essence, these really both uh, micro, uh, micro and nano technologies that are actually evolved. Uh, over millions of years. In fact, uh, uh, if you listen to some of the lectures, one of the big basic principle in nanomedicine right now, nanotechnology, is mimicking nature. We call it mimetics or uh, mimesis, from the Greek word mimesis, where we look at the biological system and then try to create an artificial system where there would be nanoparticle that would behave just like a virus. So all this uh, can come to the market uh, right, uh, very soon. How can we accelerate the, because everybody wants this, right? Well, typically any new drugs in the US takes anywhere from you know five to 10 years to come in the market, even if it's accelerated, because obviously you have to go through phase one and phase two clinical trials and ultimately phase three trials that involves thousands of patients. So it's not a simple process. 
uh, there are certain uh, now efforts to try to uh, uh, Skip some, sh some shorten things? some of the steps, but uh, still takes quite some time to develop a drug and put it in the market for uh, uh, wide use. Can you just do it over here in Europe, like uh, twice as fast? No, I'm joking. Yeah, well, well you know, uh, actually, uh, my family, uh, my sister-in-law is the CEO of a company, uh, Creative Pharma in Athens, that do clinical trials. Uh, so yes, you know, clinical trials can happen in the uh, U.S. and also in Greece. And this is the uh, what we all need to learn, that uh, there's a lot of discoveries in the academic lab, but um, very hard to translate them into the marketplace. And um, in the U.S., there are systems to do that more efficiently. Europe is kind of behind that, but I think they're uh, hopefully they're catching up. And hopefully you have the solution, the Absolutely. big solution. Absolutely. I, we are very confident uh, that uh, next uh, three to four years we're going to have... Uh, a product in the market uh, to uh, uh, alleviate uh, herpes infections and additionally a uh, herpes based uh, product uh, for at least for melanoma and hopefully for breast cancer.